Hi guys, welcome to a video, and in today's video, I just wanted to review the book Orlando, a biography by Virginia Woolf. Yes my queen. It's only taken me about a year to read this book, but we'll, we'll get into that, we will. As a disclaimer, this book is a product of the sapphic admiration that Virginia Woolf had for her lover and friend Vita Sackville West. It's a fictional retelling of Vita's life in some ways, and an encapsulation of her being in others. There are sapphic elements in this book, but you have to have prior knowledge about both the sapphic affair that took place between Vita and Virginia, and the sapphic affair that took place between Vita and Violet Trefusis. To A, pick up on any sapphic elements in this book, and to B, enjoy them. Mm. If you are not aware of the origins and inspirations for this book, then it will be interpreted very differently. Because of the time period in which this book was produced, the lesbianism is not overt. Although Wolf does very very gingerly kind of dip into the possibility of same-sex attraction in this book, but ultimately she has got around censorship and made it consumerable to the masses by essentially changing the sex of the protagonist in this book in order to portray the lesbian affairs that this book was inspired by. Ugh, this book is very layered, but I needed to give this disclaimer because if you go into reading this book thinking it's just going to be overtly sapphic, it's not not. You need that prior knowledge to pick up on the sapphic themes. And essentially the tea that is baked within this book is just my recommendation to catch up on the 20th century sapphic tea that went down before you read this. You don't have to, but the book will be a very different experience if you don't. Secondly, I think a lot of people have different interpretations of this book. That's fine, you know, reading a book is a subjective experience, it is. But my interpretation of this book is that first and foremost, it's a sapphic love letter, and secondly, it's a feminist piece. So that's just my own personal interpretation, but other people will have other interpretations of this book, which is fine. That's just mine. So Orlando, a biography, is inspired by the tumultuous family history of the aristocratic poet and novelist Vita Sackville West. The book describes the life and adventures of Orlando, a male poet who not only lives for centuries, but also one day magically becomes the female sex. Oh yes. Look, I love and adore Virginia Woolf, I do, but I found this book so very trying, it took me a very long time to finish it. I much prefer her non-fiction work, but that is for another video. And I know how to approach her fictional work, but I just, I still, still find it trying. I do. I also won't sit here and pretend that I was able to absorb the multitude of layers that are embedded into this novel. Because alongside the history and the sapphic inspirations and the feminism, it's also a written encapsulation of how the human mind functions, which is a fairly common theme in her fictional work. She will often capture what's going on within somebody's mind as opposed to what they are physically doing. And that's that's fine, but it can be quite a lot to digest alongside everything else. Perhaps it's just me. I mean, I can't say that I enjoyed reading this book. However, I found it incredibly interesting and I'm glad that I read it. So what did I like about this book? Well, I like that this book plays with sexuality within the confines of heteronormativity. Firstly, Vita Sackville West herself was somebody who was gender non-conforming and often went out quote unquote dressed as a man, and often she would actually pass for one. Of course, in reality, she simply just wore masculine clothing, but because of society's strict gender norms and the association between masculine dress and men, that can and often does translate to being a man. So that's possibly one reason why the character of Orlando starts off as a man. The second reason was possibly it opened up a door to fully explore Vita's sexuality 
with other women in a way that was digestible to the general public. However, even when Orlando turns into a woman, she will in parts of this book still quote unquote dress as a man. And I say all this to say it essentially links back to the essence of Vita Sackville West and her own exploration of gender nonconformity. In fact, there are a lot of parallels between the character of Orlando and Vita Sackville West, the love of nature, the love of dogs, writing poetry and the fixation on house decor and interior design. And of course, the commentary about Orlando's shapely and fine legs, which is famously something that Virginia Woolf appreciated about Vita Sackville West. The character of Sasha in this book, I can say without hesitation, is based on Violet Refusis. I'm 110% sure of that. And the character of Sasha and her romantic relationship with Orlando is where Wolf plays and warps lesbianism within the confines of heteronormativity. Because when Orlando first meets Sasha, he thinks that she might be a man. He's still attracted to her, but he also knows he can't be with another man. But I think it was bold of Wolf to even go as far as to suggest that men can be attracted to other men within the time period that this book was published. But it's fine because it turns out that Sasha is in fact a woman. Whew. And Orlando and Sasha have a very, very intense love affair, which mirrors the real life love affair between Vita and Violet. Violet was the great love of Vita's life. So they also talk to each other and write each other love letters in a foreign language, which is exactly what Vita and Violet would do as well. And ultimately in the novel, Sasha leaves Orlando heartbroken, which again mirrors what happened in real life. It's it's not subtle. The novel is not in any way subtle. When it comes to calling Violet Trefusis out, it's not. Naturally, I found these parts of the novel very interesting because I'm very interested in that real life love affair. Very, very interested. So another thing I will briefly mention, which I found interesting in terms of sexuality and sex in this book is that when Orlando meets her husband as a woman, she recognizes him to be a woman despite the fact that he is the male sex and her husband also recognizes Orlando to be a man even though she's the female sex. So this I think is to do with the fact that Vita's husband Harold Nicholson was likely a homosexual male and I say this because it's well documented that he had several affairs with other men and a man in his kind of position in the time period in which he existed it's just not surprising that he would have protected himself by entering into a heterosexual marriage. You know, a heterosexual marriage in that period was just the done thing and it would have acted as a safety net for him. It's documented that Vita's husband had a multitude of affairs with men and Vita herself had a multitude of affairs with women. And it seems to me that Wolf almost takes up this tired notion of the association between gay men and women, or wanting to be women, or acting like women, and applies it to Orlando's husband in this novel because of who he is based upon. I could of course be totally wrong, it's just my speculation, but she's definitely at least playing around with that kind of notion. I also feel like the character of Harriet could be based upon Wolf herself. It's the way that she describes Harriet and her relationship with Orlando, which which makes me think so. First of all, Harriet is older than Orlando and in real life Virginia was older than Vita. Harriet is also incredibly tall and Virginia is also incredibly tall. Well, five foot seven. And Wolf also describes Harriet as this kind of hair-like creature with a long face who in the end Orlando runs away from, either under the intensity of his feelings for Harriet or just a wish to be free of her. So I think with the character of Harriet, it's perhaps Virginia's perception of herself and her relationship 
with Vita Sackville West. I feel like it fits, but I could be totally, totally wrong. Okay, so moving on to the feminist aspects of this book. Yes, I would label this book as a feminist piece, which is just a very succinct way of saying that this book explores what it is to be a woman and makes subtle commentary on it. I should say. And sadly, as is often the case with reading women's literature from the past, a lot of what she's saying about what it is to be a woman in a historical period could have been written about what it is to be a woman in today's society. But what's unique about the feminism in this book is Orlando is somebody who suddenly has womanhood thrust upon him. So when he changes sex, we can see see her life as a woman in stark contrast to what it was as a man. And both Orlando and the reader begin to notice all the ways that she is no longer free. She's now wary of being alone with men. She has to think about her modesty, her safety, and all the expectations that are thrust upon her for simply being the female sex. And Wolf really portrays the constraints and the truth of what it is to be a woman that is still relevant to this day. And I find it interesting reading women's literature from earlier periods because you can recognise that same frustration and that awareness about the confines of womanhood that a lot of women still have today. And it's disheartening to see that women have been expressing this for well over a century and uh, in some ways things really haven't progressed all that much. I should say that there's an exploration of gender critical ideas in this novel, but I don't know that Wolf herself was able to step outside of the gender conformity and ideas about sex that she would have absorbed in the time period in which she existed because of how rigid particularly British society was around sex and gender expectations. You can tell she was questioning the expectations of the female sex, but I don't think she was able to unpack it in a way that we are able to do so today. But again, this novel is so layered and there's many different ways to interpret it. <sighs> Yeah. Lastly, I also found it interesting, there was a character in this novel who, after writing a very thoughtful and profound passage, goes and lays his head in a gas oven, essentially committing suicide. And I thought this was interesting just because I wondered if it was a reflection of where Wolf's mind was at the time that she was writing this book, uh, because uh, of the way in which she died. Uh, God rest her soul. Still, that is only my speculation and may have no relation to the truth whatsoever. Overall, I think Orlando was a beautifully profound and intelligent piece of work and the way it's written is exquisite, but it was really hard for me to stay connected with it. As much as I love Virginia Woolf, and Lord knows I do, I just can't sit here and lie about my difficulty with staying connected to this book. I just, it took me a long time to finish it. I could only deal with it in very small doses at a time. The feminist aspects of this book are incredibly interesting, especially from a historical standpoint. And of course, if you have any interest in the sapphic affair between Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West and Vita Sackville West and Violet Refuses, this book is a must read. It is literally tea in fictional form. It's, it's tea and it's gossip and I'm, this is my brand you know, that's my brand. So yes, even though I didn't enjoy this book, I still found it incredibly interesting and informative in some places and Orlando is an incredibly valuable piece of literature and an incredibly important piece of women's literature, women's voices. So I can recommend that you read this book, but I would just be aware of what you were getting into, and I would also do your research beforehand. Okay, if you've read Orlando, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments section below. If you're a lesbian, if you're a woman who enjoys Virginia Woolf's literature, come and join the Sapphic Underground Club. Just come and join it. It is for the distinguished homosexual. No, it's not, because I am not 
distinguished at all. If only you knew. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!